Hi, I'm Van King. This is the continuation of the series about making stacked images for macro photography and the steps you have to go through to get from point A to point B. By now you have the lenses that are fitting your camera and you're just champing at the bit wanting to photograph some macro photography items. So I've set up a studio and this is basically the layout I'm going to work with. The one thing that I'm going to talk about first is lighting. Because without proper lighting, your specimens, your objects, whatever you're photographing, will not look pleasing. The setup I'm going to start with, I'm going to use two lights. That's a popular combination for many photographers. Ordinarily, on a shoot, I'll use nine lights. Right now, I only have seven. But you'll see the differences as I photograph this object using various lighting conditions. I'll also take some pictures that are going to be stacked, so there is some payoff in this. You're not just going to learn one technique, but it's not going to be detailed about how to use the equipment for stacking. This is mostly about lighting, and it's going to show you the results you're going to get from a stacked image that is lighted under different conditions. I've set this camera up so that it is in focus. And there is some trial and error to that until you know which lens to use versus the size of the specimen and how far away from the sensor do you have to extend that lens for focus to be achieved by this result. The specimen that I have here is about 15, it's about 12 centimeters wide. I've got a long, long working distance. This really isn't a macro shot. But I have something I want to tell you about. This is a rock. It has little crystals on it. So I need to show what the whole rock looks like, but that's not interesting. The people who are going to visit and be interested in these images want to see the details. And that's what the macro photography is going to give you. So I have in this field of view the front and the very front of the specimen in focus. When you look at the thickness of this specimen, you see that it is probably around six or seven centimeters thick. And the front edge might be in focus. But remember, the first lenses I'm talking about are in larger lenses. And larger lenses have almost no depth of field. But they have incredible sharpness. And that's an ideal combination for stacking. So what I will do is I will photograph the front of the specimen, the middle of the specimen, and the back of the specimen. I might do that in four or five steps using about one centimeter increments. The beauty of this very long working distance is your depth of field is greater. And the closer you start out with a specimen, the shallower the depth of field. Frequently, when I photograph specimens, I will use a telephoto lens. That gives you the maximum depth of field and then the problem is only finding the sharpest lens that will achieve what you want. So we have the specimen, two lights. Let's show you this one is the one that's showing and this one is showing. I'm actually giving you a little bit more benefit and I'm going to turn that off. Just looking at two lights coming into the specimen and I will photograph this using a control box. The unit, in case you need to know, I'll talk about this in detail in another video. This is called a stack shot. It's made by a US company and they have a little controller device and I don't know why they didn't make this controllable by using a laptop or something. This is probably the most counterintuitive control box you will ever use. But they are the only game in town at the moment. If you want to buy other kinds of stacking units, they, for the most part, are much more expensive than this one. This is the most economical one at the moment. Presumably, because it's such a simple apparatus and the market is big enough, other companies will enter the marketplace and the competition will then yield a much easier to use product. I'm going to use a fixed sequence. I'm going to start from what is in focus I'm going to choose one centimeter increments, and you don't have to know how to control this box yet. We'll talk about that at a later time, only because there's a learning curve associated with it, 
And we just want to know about the lighting conditions that you're going to set up. It takes a little while to get it precisely where you want to be. I've selected one centimeter increments. When this control box is being changed by pushing the button, it goes slowly at first and then goes incredibly fast. So you have to learn how much time and how much touching can you keep using until you get exactly to where you want to be. It's now at one centimeter. I've selected it. It's on the start position. The stacking sequence is then automated. The one thing you have to do with the lighting is once it's in position, you don't move it. Because the changing in lighting conditions changes what the stacking programs do with the images that you get. It should also be on manual setting. Manual keeps the camera's sensors from adjusting the exposure levels on each individual photograph. And that shows up in the process when you're trying to get a properly stacked image. Every light has to have the same shadows, the same highlights, the same general lighting of the field to give you the best possible result of how the computer stacks your images to get the sharpest places. If you handhold a light, you're doomed. Don't try to get that one special place, give you a little bit of a reflection, unless you've mounted it so it's absolutely stationary. 